Before we start with uh, the example problem, uh, I want to introduce one other concept here, and that is something we call the fundamental charge. Uh, Fellman and Millikan uh, did an experiment uh, earlier part of the 20th century in which he suspended uh, a droplet of oil between two metal plates. He zapped the, the uh, droplet of oil with x-rays. Uh, what they did was, he wasn't entirely sure, but we now know it knocked electrons loose, uh, but, but he, all he knew was it changed the charge. And so he then balanced these charges. So if that's a little bit negative charge, made that one negative, that one positive. Uh, and so gravity pulled down and the electrical force was pushing up. And so he was trying to balance the two and, and he calculated exactly what the charge was there. Then he zapped it again, calculated what the charge was again, zapped it again, calculated the charge again, did this for a long time. In fact, at some of these oil drops he kept floating in there for days at a time. And and then and when he was done, when he was done, he made a graph of how many uh, 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 how many times it was a certain charge. And so what he found was it was this charge, you know, so many times, that charge so many times. And then he started plotting this. And as he plotted here, he realized that that it kept coming up. So the spacing between each of these possible charges was always the same. And this gave rise to the idea of a fundamental charge. The fundamental charge was the smallest elemental charge. The symbol that was used for that was E. And so the fundamental charge, E, and, and uh, what he found was he never got a difference that was less than an integer number of fundamental charges. And so E, uh, the fundamental charge, is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, the, we now realize that the fundamental charge actually is coming from uh, electrons uh, moving around in his experiment. So an electron has a charge is minus E. Now, we then discovered that a proton has a charge of plus E. In fact, the symbol for an electron, by the way, the symbol is E minus, okay, to indicate that it is in fact a, 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 uh, a, a fundamental sort of thing. Okay, there's actually a, a, a piece of antimatter called a positron, and a positron has the same mass as an electron, but it has a charge of plus E, and the symbol for a positron is E plus. Um, so it has the same mass uh, and all other properties are identical except that it is possibly charged instead of negative. Uh, if a positron and an anti, uh, if a positron and an electron were near each other, they'd obviously be attracted to each other. If they touch, they totally annihilate each other uh, and, and, and give off a blast of gamma rays. Uh, that's beyond where we are in, in the class just yet, so just hang on to that idea. But this, 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 this turns out to be a very fascinating thing, and that is this fundamental charge. The fundamental charge is, in fact, fundamental. Uh, there, are, there are no particles that have fractional charge that are isolated. Uh, now, uh, in, in uh, a few decades ago, they did discover that there are some other particles called quarks, and quarks can have uh, plus or minus one-third E or plus or minus two-thirds E, depending on the, the quark, but one thing that was discovered is you never find quarks by themselves. Quarks are always in groups. You can have two quarks, and that makes a meson, or three quarks, and that would make a proton or a neutron. And, and, but it, it would, it, you, you, you know, they are always in groups so that the group of quarks has a total charge that's either zero, plus or minus E, or plus or minus 2E. Uh, in principle, you could also have plus or minus uh, 3e, I suppose, but you never, uh, 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 that, 
that would be something more than three quarks, though. That'd be a tetra quark uh, uh, in order to get up to that point. But but uh, 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 but you never get uh, um, you never get uh, fractional charges for a particle. So again, this is why the fundamental charge. The fundamental charge is actually very fundamental. 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You should know that. Uh, this should be something that's stuck in your brain, just like the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's one of these absolute constants uh, uh, that you just ought to know. Uh, uh, you know, when you get done with, with physics 1, uh, you, you, you know, Brain into your brain is the acceleration to gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared. Uh, sometimes that's just rounded to 9.8 meters per second squared, but you, 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 you have this in your brain. You don't even need to look that up when you're solving problems because it's like stuck in your brain. So this should be stuck in your brain 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the fundamental charge. Uh, it will be stuck in your brain because you're going to be using it a whole bunch, and so it's just going to be be uh, something that you get used to. Uh, uh, and as I said, we while quarks can be fractional charges, you never get quarks that are by themselves. Quarks are always in in groups, and those groups always the only permitted groups uh, either must have integer charge, either positive or negative or zero.